Hi, I'm Sean McDonough, Professor of New Testament here at Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary. And this spring, as I've done pretty much every spring for the last 20 years or so, I'll be teaching Exegesis of Revelation, uh, where we work through the Greek text of that last intriguing book of the Bible. And the question that always comes up every time I teach it, and the question I continue to meditate on myself is, why is Revelation the strange way it is? Uh, when you get down to it, the theology is no different than any other part of the New Testament. We're to maintain our faithful witness to Jesus, trusting in him who died for our sins and committing to walk in his ways. When we look at the plot line, it's really at the end times exodus as God's people move out from their oppressors into the glorious freedom of the kingdom of God. So why tell it in the odd way that it's told? It's a question that continues to consume me year after year. The basic answer is that it speaks to our imagination. And I would suggest that one way, a helpful way of thinking about it is that it's kind of a dreamlike approach to understanding the kingdom of God. Let me tell you a real, actual dream I had several years ago by way of illustration. So I'd just been teaching here at Gordon Conwell for a few years and I had this dream that I was on my first day of teaching a course, War in the Bible. I've never taught that course in reality, but in the dream world, I was teaching War of the Bible. It was the first day. It was a Gordon Conwell course, but as dreams go, I was actually on my undergraduate campus, and I showed up for the first day of class, looked around in my bag for my paper syllabi. Uh, we used to actually print the syllabus out on paper and distribute it to students, unlike the electronic versions today. But in any case, I'm looking around. I, I can't find the syllabus, and I say, Sorry, uh, students, I need to go back to my office and get the syllabi. But as I leave the lecture hall, this enormous old-fashioned lecture hall, as I leave it, I realize the reason I don't have my syllabi is that I never made a syllabus. And the reason I never made a syllabus is I hadn't given a moment's thought to this whole course until now. And so what I did in the dream world is start wandering around the campus trying to think, first of all, of how to bluff my way through the hour and a half lecture, and secondly, how to develop a kind of sketch of a course as if I had some idea of what was going on. I'm thinking, oh, we got spiritual warfare, Old Testament, just all these ideas kicking around. Finally, I returned to the classroom after about 10 minutes. Students are in the hallways. They're out of their seats milling about, and you just sense the frustration and anxiety. I'm thinking, I, I have no idea what I'm going to do. Now, you don't have to be Sigmund Freud to figure out that that dream somehow speaks to my profound sense of anxiety and lack of preparedness as a professor. But what makes it interesting from a hermeneutical standpoint, from a how do we think about this, is there's a blend of reality and fiction. I am a professor, I do teach courses, I do have students, I did produce paper syllabi. But those precise details of where the course was and what the course was, uh, they don't match one to one. And so there's this really intriguing relationship between what the vision's pointing to, or what the dream signifies, and the things that are described as the dream is reported. And I find Revelation works that way, which makes this an endlessly fascinating text to study. So I hope you'll uh, join us this spring, 2022, for Exegesis of Revelation at Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary.